So, one of the most common misconceptions when it comes to cybersecurity and specifically threats like ransomware is that you need to execute an exe file in order to get infected. Today we're going to look at a fileless ransomware called NetWalker, which we have on the desktop. And if we examine this, I'm just going to right click and edit. You'll see that this is just a PowerShell script. And what's worse, it's just one command. You've got invoke expression, command, and then you've got a string, and that's it. This is not a binary file. You don't even need this file. You just need this one string of text. And it's a long string of text, as you can see. And it doesn't make any sense. And that's because all of this is encrypted. But if we go ahead and execute this one command, by clicking on run, what's going to happen very quickly to our beautiful screenshots of Jurassic Park and our plays of Shakespeare in the documents folder is that they are going to get encrypted. As you can see, once we refresh the page, everything's gone and we have a readme file. If we open this, all your files are encrypted by NetWalker. Our encryption algorithms are very strong and your files are very well protected. The only way to get them back is to cooperate with us and get the decryptor program. And then the traditional ransomware stuff. So you have to download and install Tor, visit their website, put your personal code so they know what victim you are, and then negotiate some sort of ransom payment. You pay them, they give you the decryptor to get your data back. Typical cybercrime. But what's scary is that we do not need to run any executable file. We do not need to get infected by some sort of Trojan beforehand. And we don't even need administrator privileges. I know this is an administrator account, but it makes no difference whether you execute it as an admin or as a user. It's still going to be able to encrypt the data in your local folders. Anything you can access, it can too. And here's the thing, this itself is a PowerShell command. It doesn't have to be that way. I mean, this could start as part of an Office macro. It could start as a JavaScript code in your browser. Every time you're running a web app, there are scripts executing within your browser. You don't have to download and run it. Now, this particular threat is detected by 31 out of 60 vendors in Varstool, but it was first seen two months ago. And I can tell you when these things come out, they're not detected as much. And the reason for that is there's nothing to detect. It's just a command, just a string of characters, and it's all encrypted anyway. So there's no way an analyst can look at it unless they do the behavioral analysis to say that this is malware. Maybe you could do some sort of pattern matching, but that can be offset by different encoding methods. If we scroll down, you can see this one is still not detected by many vendors. Keep in mind that farce total is just likely the signatures and basic heuristics. So it may not be an accurate reflection of how these products would perform on the system because they may have other components like hips and behavior blocker. But one of the reasons attackers choose methods like this is because they are difficult to detect. This particular one was actually picked up by Trend Micro and they called it reflective loading. Now Walker ransomware attacks involve malware that's not compiled but written in PowerShell and executed directly in memory without storing the actual ransomware on the disk, making this a fallless threat, enabling it to maintain persistence and evade detection by abusing tools that are already in the system to initiate attacks. As many of you know, Windows has the capability to dynamically link libraries, and this allows techniques like DLL injection. So rather than loading an application from disk, what you could do is, within an active process that's already running, inject your own libraries. And this is a pretty common technique that malware has been using since the beginning of time. But this is one of the examples where you can have an entirely fallless threat with absolutely no trace on the system embedding an x86 ransomware DLL into the system. And for this ransomware, it uses the uh, process explore.exe. So even if you were to do some sort of system analysis here, for example, if you open Task Manager or you open some sort of sys internals tool, you're not going to see a malicious process. You're just going to see explore.exe, which is a system process encrypting your data. 
which makes it really difficult in any kind of a response environment. The best defense against this, of course, is going to be in-depth behavior monitoring, making sure nothing is modifying files in a suspicious manner, regardless of whether or not it's a system process. And unfortunately, that's not something that's easy to do, and a lot of solutions won't. But hopefully this video shed some light into the dangers that can be associated with scripts and different attack factors online, why you need active protection on the system. And we're increasingly seeing attacks that don't depend on exe files, which is what most people think of as an attack factor when it comes to malware. Now, one of the ways you could theoretically prevent this specific type of malware injection is by just disabling any kind of PowerShell script from executing on your system and you can do that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, one of the best ways to protect yourself from threats like these will be to back up your data and use good protection on system, both of which our sponsor for this video, Acronis, can help you with. This video is brought to you by Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, a product that actually ties in all the different aspects of ransomware protection that I talk about all the time. First one, backup. It's got on-system as well as cloud backup built in so you can recover from any ransomware attack. It's also got real-time protection against ransomware and illicit crypto mining. If you go into settings, it's got all the bells and whistles. It can protect your NAS. It can protect your backup files. Very important. It's also got proper real-time protection along with behavioral monitoring so it can detect malicious behavior and process, web filtering as well, and even a vulnerability assessment module. But hey, this is the PC security channel, so we gotta test this, right? As usual, I have my script ready to go. We've got Malex right here, and we're gonna run all the ransomware samples. We usually do infamous threats from the last five years and see what happens. It's going by pretty fast, but as you can see, things are getting blocked and we end up with a proactive detection of 100%. This is a truly unique product in its class right now. You can also get a full 30% off if you decide to buy in using the coupon code TPSC22. So check them out and show them some love for supporting the PC Security channel. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay informed, stay secure.